Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can tune your bushings ballast song to no tap and no play with only a few simple supplies that you're gonna need. So I'd like to apologize for my extended absence from YouTube. I had a lot of work and school stuff come up, so I had to take a break from video production. However, I'm really happy to say that because of the fact that my schedule is a little bit more open now, I should be able to put content out a little more reliably. And now that I have a little bit better of a knife budget, you can leave your suggestions for what I should review in the comments section below. And I'll make sure to get to the ones that either receive the most likes or seem the most interesting to me. So one quick thing before the video starts, I ran into a little bit of a problem filming this video. I was depending on being able to use the ultra wide camera on my phone, which would have allowed me to capture more of my desk footage. However, I wound up using the normal camera, which means that some of what I say, such as, hey, look at this, or as you can see, those are out of frame, so you won't be able to see those. But other than that, the video is very illustrative of how to tune a bushings knife, so I don't really think there's gonna be any major problems with that, but just be aware that those breaks, I'm just intending to show the knife to the camera, although my point gets across pretty well either way. And now, without further ado, let's get right into the video. So here are the basic materials that you're going to need to tune a bushings balisong. First up is obviously the knife that you plan to tune. In my case, this is the Squid Industries Nautilus. As you can see, the play is a little bit more than I would want in a bushings knife. Same with the tap, which you can hear pretty prominently when you flip and you can also run into blade rub problems. Next, you're going to need the appropriate torque size bit. I have T10 size bit in this driver because the Squid Industries Nautilus only has T10 size screws for the pivots. Next, you're going to need some fine grit sandpaper. Right now, I'm using some P800 grit sandpaper I bought from Lowe's for like $8 a piece. You can buy it in these Craftsman. No, I'm not sponsored boxes. Now, one of the most important things that you're gonna need that you might not even think of is a smooth surface to work off of. I'll explain why this is important in just a bit, but I'm using a piece of granite. If you have a piece of glass that's just cut like this that you can put on a table, that's great. But you need to make sure that you have a smooth, even surface to work off of. Now, the first step is to identify the handle that's the problem. So in order to do this, I like to hold up one of the handles and check the tap by swinging it. Then I'll do it again. I think it's on the bite handle, so I can do this again. And it sounds like it's mostly on the bite handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the safe handle screws first, and I'm going to separate those from the bite handle. You always want to tune your knife handle specifically so you can make sure that each handle on its own has little to no tap and play. This will prevent issues of you maybe over sanding one of the bushings for the bite handle when you really needed it in the safe handle and vice versa so that you can correctly diagnose and fix the problem with your knife. Also, when you're tuning your knife, you should always clean it. I just have tissues that I get all my Loctite and all of my pivot gunk on and I'll just go in and I'll just wipe all this off. This will help keep it so that it's nice and clean for when you put it back together and now you can check the tap on the other handle. As you can probably hear, there is plenty of tap on this handle and there's a bit more play than I would like. So now I'm gonna take apart the pivot system for this handle. So once you've done that, you should always make sure to keep your bushing the right way up or at least keep the washers in the position they were in. I would just like to separate it like this. I keep the bottom washer there, the top washer like that, and the bushing like this if I'm storing it. This way I know which way the bushing is oriented and which way the washers contact the bushing. This is important because of the way washers and bushings interact. As you can probably see on most of your bushings knives, if you look at it, there's going to be a slight groove where your bushings contact the washers. This is because the way that bushings work is that they need to contact the washer so that the blade doesn't contact the handles. This causes grooves to form in the washers that will sometimes, if the bushings are ever so slightly undersized or well-tuned, those grooves will go into the blade. This will help improve tolerances and swing and it'll keep, it, it'll keep its tolerances for longer. Okay, so now that I've got my blade done, I know that this is the bite handle, so I'm going to set it aside like this. I'm gonna put the handle like that, right? So now you've got your washers and your bushing just sitting on the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this tissue, I'm just gonna try and clean as much of the gunk off of this as I possibly can, right? All right, so now I'm gonna take my P800 grit sandpaper. There's not a ton of tap and play on this, so I'm not really gonna take so much time to make sure that this is good. However, 
I do want to make sure that there's not a ton of tap and play when the handles go back together, which is honestly something that's more difficult than checking it individually. However, once you get better at tuning, you'll know how this works. So I'm just going to take my bushing nice and gently. I'm just going to put it onto this sandpaper, and I'm just going to make counterclockwise circles without putting very much pressure on it. This is so that the steel does come off, as you can probably see on the sandpaper. However, you don't want to take too much of it off at one time. This will cause the bushing to become undersized faster, which is obviously not what you want. Because you can always take off a little bit more steel, but you can never put any back onto a bushing. This brings me to my next point. You need to be incredibly careful when tuning your knife. I've done this before and I've undersized bushings because I've forgotten to be careful when I'm sanding them and then they get undersized and then I'm pissed and then there's nothing to do, right? So what you wanna do is you wanna be careful. You wanna maybe take a few pass arounds, just go around a few times, okay? And then you can take it and you can put the handle back together, right? So I'm going to put these bushings back on like so. Make sure that the grooves align up as they should with the bushing. So now I'm just going to put the handle back together, which is kind of a pain to do, and this is not a, this is not a fast process. You should set aside some time to do this, maybe in the afternoon, maybe like a couple of hours or so, because this is incredibly tedious. Now I'm going to take this other Torx bit and I'm just gonna act, use it as a pivot needle. I'm just gonna thread it through all of my components so that they stay in space, they stay in place. I'm just gonna put my pivot sex bolt onto the, onto the Torx bit. I'm just gonna pop it out like that. Then you can just take your Torx 10 bit and your pivot screw, and you can just screw it back in. This helps to prevent anybody losing their components. Okay, and you can feel it. Now there's no tap, and there's still great swing. You see, this is a much easier knife to tune than some others would be. However, I would still recommend being very careful. There's no tap like this, right? You can't hear anything and the play is much more acceptable now. However, do not get arrogant with this. If you undersize, undersize a bushing, it will be the difference between having no handle play and having the same handle play as either a bad bushings balisong, like this Caladrius here, or simply a washer's knife, similar to a Mako or a Triton, okay? So now I'm just gonna take this handle apart because I know that it's been tuned well. I know that it's in good condition. So now what I'm gonna do is instead of separating the bushings from the handle, I'm simply going to take it out, take the blade out so I can work on the safe handle next. Let the washer fall, take the washer off the top, and then tap out the bushing from the blade. If it'll get the fuck out, that would be sick. You should always be a little more careful with your tools than that, but because I'm trying to make a video, I'm clearly not going to be, because being careful is for pussies. Just kidding. Always be careful with your knife parts. If you lose one in your fucking carpet and you don't find it for another two months, you already have ordered a new set, and then you'll find it and be fucking mad at yourself. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this handle together like so. I'm gonna thread this through as if there was a blade there. Just gonna make sure that that top washer goes in as well, if I can. Okay, so now I've found the bushing that I dropped, and so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my washers and my bushing. I'm just gonna put them together like so. I'm essentially going to thread them as if the handle was there and as if there was the uh, blade through there. And I'm just gonna thread it through like I would if I was putting it back together fully and get them all lined up on this pivot. Now what I can do is I can just put the screw in and there. Now you've got your washers and your bushing oriented as the way they should be. And I know that this is the side where the sex bolt goes through. So I know that this is the correct orientation because this is a darkened pivot screw or not pivot screw, but a handle screw. And this one isn't. So that's a really easy way to mess up is if you put the bushing in the wrong way, make sure that you know which side is up. So now I'm just going to set this aside because I know that's been tuned. Now we can move on to the safe handle. So now I'm just gonna flip this around because now I'm on the safe handle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna find something to clean this off with. So I'm gonna clean off most of the gunk, make sure it's nice and clean. Make sure to not put too much pressure on it, all right? Because you wanna make sure that you're gentle with these. Putting too much pressure on it can lead to it being uneven, which can then lead the washers to not run into the blade properly. If the washers are lying uneven on the bushing, then you're gonna run into the problem of, well, now they're not going to contact the blade as they should. 
Okay, so now I'm just gonna put this back together. Also, if you want more tutorial, or at least a little bit longer of a tutorial on how to tune Bushings Ballast Songs, I learned a lot of this from a guy named Lugermonger, or Lugermonger, either one. I'll link his video to that in the description below. His video isn't much more technical than mine. However, he does kind of go through it a little slower and he explains a little bit more as to why you should be careful. And so if you really wanna make sure that you know what you're doing, I would absolutely recommend going to check out that video. Um, again, link to that will be in the description. So now that I've taken a few passes on this bushing, I'm just gonna put this knife back together. See how the tap and play is doing. No tap. Good swing. So now that we've resolved that issue, you can hear there's no tap. Swing is still good. You can see there's not much handle play. So now that I've tuned this fully, I'm just gonna put this knife back together as I normally would. So I'm gonna put both of the darkened sides, or the both of the darkened sex bolts on one side. And so this would be oriented like this because you can see that the other darkened pivot screw is like this. So you can imagine it would look something like this. Okay, so I'm just going to ever so gently put that down, make sure I don't flip the bushing over because it needs to be oriented properly. Right, and so now I've gotten that off and I can put it there and I can put this right here. So now I'm just gonna put the bushing back into the blade and make sure it doesn't fall out. Slide that back into the handle. Just gonna put this washer in, and you you don't really need to be super careful about the washer, simply because you know if like worst case scenario you can sand your washers a little bit, the tolerances will be a little better. But I'd recommend just trying to be careful with uh, your knife parts whenever possible, because um, it's usually better to not throw caution to the wind with these things, especially judging from how expensive these are, right? If you've got like cheaper knives, maybe you can just replace them, but with like I don't know like a Nautilus like this, that'd be an extra two hundred dollars to replace, and it's just not worth it. And sending it to a tuner is a lot of time and money, right? It's like 40 bucks and it takes maybe like a month assuming their books are open. So I'd recommend just being careful with your knife parts uh, and treating them well. It'll help you in the long run and it's a good habit to have for when you maybe get into more complex knife mods. So now I've got both of these tightened. You can hear there's still a little bit of tap, but it does sound better now. The swing is still good on this, which is important because it means that I haven't undersized these bushings. If you undersize a bushing, it means that the handle is cinching too hard on the washers, and now there's essentially no bushing there, which means it has the same effect as a normal washer's knife. So, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get rid of all the tap in this knife. However, the handle play is a little bit more acceptable now, and the tap isn't as bad, and it sounds a little bit better now. That's in essence how you tune a Bushings Balisong. Some knives are gonna hold tolerances a little bit better than others. This Gale, for example, that I bought with hand-fitted bushings has perfect tolerances. There's no tap, and there's almost no play when the pivots are tightened down fully, right? You can see a little bit there. I'm just gonna go in with my Torx bit. I'm just gonna tighten it down, and there's almost no play at all. And it's still got great swing. And if you have a Gale, you can do this exact same process on that knife. It doesn't matter the knife. If it has bushings, you can tune it the same way. I've got this hourglass replicant here. I messed up the bushings because I wasn't careful on it, but I could get this to no tap, no play if I wanted to, if I had another set of fucking bushings. But USA Knife Maker is always out of stock. So in essence, you can go from this to this. I hope this cleared this process up a little bit for some of you guys. This is a process you can do with any bushings knife. And you can even apply some of these techniques to a washer's knife if you have, I don't know, a brand new Triton, but the tolerances aren't great. You can just sand the washers down a little bit, pop them back in and see what that does for you. Otherwise, I don't really have much else to say. Thank you guys so much for waiting for this video. I know my upload schedule has been terrible. I haven't uploaded a video in like five months. I had a lot of work, I had a lot of school work to do, um, some personal stuff came up, so. Uh, this is kind of an apology video. This is also to hold you guys over until the full review of this Nautilus comes out. I'm really excited to make this. And if you want to get some info on this knife before that video comes out, then I'll just refer you over to Will Hirsch's channel. He and Brandon Baker made a great review on this knife, and I think it's a really good beginner's perspective as Brandon handled most of the, most of the video. Thank you guys so much for stopping by, and I hope you guys have a great week. Later.